You will sound so impressive if you say something like, Hey everyone, I'm Monica and I'm an internal medicine attending and my goal is to help you succeed in medical school, residency and beyond. So today I'm going to be answering a question that I get from medical students all the time and that is, how can I stand out? How can I go the extra mile? So I'm going to go over a bunch of tips on how to wow your attending. And I'm going to focus specifically on your internal medicine rotation. And by the way, no matter what specialty you're going into, internal medicine is one of your core rotations, so the grade does matter. So without further ado, let's get started. My first tip is to answer the team's clinical questions. So your attending definitely does not know everything. Questions come up on rounds all the time. So you can hear things like, should we give this medication or that medication? Which one has better evidence behind it? Here's where you can come to the rescue. You can say, hey guys, I'll look this up and I'll tell you guys what I find. And later that day, you can sit your team down and say, hey, I did this quick literature search and I found this amazing review article on this exact topic and this was the conclusion. And don't forget to relate it back to your patient. You can say, this trial's conclusions actually apply very well to our patient because our patient has this and this characteristic, which are shared characteristics with the study population. So answering clinical questions for your team is definitely extra mile material because it not only makes you look good, but it benefits the whole team. Tip number two, refer back to the primary literature. You will sound so impressive if you say something like, According to the Hokusai, Select D, and more recently the Caravaggio trials, a DOAC would be a reasonable choice for anticoagulation in this cancer patient. Bam! You just dropped a ton of knowledge right there, and you've shown that you take evidence-based medicine seriously, and you're looking things up about your patient on the side. Now you don't have to go on a tangent about each of these trials unless you're asked. Just sneak the name of a trial into the plan to make an impressive point. And by the way, if you are gonna mention a trial, please know something about it because otherwise this could totally backfire. Tip number three, if there's a pending task for someone else's patient, still offer to do it. So to this day, I remember when I was a resident, I had this medical student come up to me and say, hey, I got this blood transfusion consent form signed because I noticed that your patient's hemoglobin dropped below seven today. And it wasn't even her patient. So this action just blew my mind because it showed two impressive things. It showed that the student was paying attention and was able to anticipate something that the team needed and she was considerate enough to get it done while the rest of the team was busy with other things. If you have extra time to kill and you notice that a patient that's not even yours has a pending task, hey, why not offer to do it? Tip number four, develop a relationship with your patient's families and keep them updated. So I have another story from when I was an attending. I had a medical student who developed a really strong relationship with one of my patient's families. I mean, the student spent a lot of time at bedside explaining everything that was going on. He made phone calls to make sure that the family stayed updated. One of the family members came up to me and specifically told me how touched they were and how comforting it was to have the student there. So I actually specifically mentioned this event in the student's evaluation. So please set an example and communicate with your patient's family, and I promise you that will not go unnoticed. So tip number five, know your patients better than anyone else on the team. So when I was a resident, I was taking care of up to 20 patients, and there was no way I was going to remember every single detail about every patient. As an attending, I'm much faster because I've had some repetition, and I know what details are important and what's not. But as a med student, you oftentimes don't know what's important. So looking at a patient's chart is information overload. There are always notes, labs, imaging, and procedures, and it can really be overwhelming. But because you don't know what's important, you end up going through the chart really meticulously and you pick up on tiny details. And that can be really helpful for the team on rounds. So if the attending, for example, says something like, oh, hey, does this patient have a history of hypertension? Can you remind me? Or is this high blood pressure something new? And you can be like, oh, actually, yeah, the patient does have a history of hypertension and he's on a loading pain for it at home. Tip number six. Seek feedback and incorporate it. So about halfway through your time with an attending, take a moment to pull the attending aside during lunchtime or some other downtime in the afternoon and ask for some feedback. 
And the reason you want to do this is that it's the worst when you wait until the end of your time with an attending and the attending has all this constructive feedback for you. And you're like, why didn't you tell me earlier? I could have fixed it. So don't let that happen. Some attendings might not be that detail oriented. So instead of asking something like, hey, how am I doing? You can ask for specifics like how are my presentations and how are my notes? So if you're attending pinpoint some areas of improvement, you can specifically focus on that so that your attending can notice that improvement over the rest of the time. Now time for a couple of bonus tips that really should go without saying, but you'd be surprised. So number one, always be a positive person. So you'll hear your residents maybe complain about the work that they're doing or groan every time an admission comes in, but you can set the example. You can be cheerful and excited to learn. I specifically point out a positive attitude when I'm writing my evaluations. One more thing, please be respectful to your team. Your attending is going to ask your resident how you're doing because your resident spends a lot more time with you than your attending does. So you're gonna want them to have good things to say about you. And that's that. If these tips were helpful, please check out my other videos on how to succeed in medical school. And feel free to leave feedback and requests for content in the comments. Thank you again and see you next time.